In this video, we're going to be looking at how to identify stakeholders in a project. So this is important when you're thinking about fundraising, because at this stage you've probably had an idea, you've worked out how much you're going to need, and you've got an initial project budget, and you've started to communicate your ideas, you've worked out a kind of activity plan, and now you're working out how to identify the people who are going to be involved or benefit from your project. First of all, we need to think about why you need to identify stakeholders at all. Really, you're going to need them to get behind your project and they're going to help you at different ways in different stages of the project. So you really want to work out uh, who benefits from this project that you're making. Those are your key stakeholders. So who's directly affected by it? Who is indirectly affected by it? And who are the key people, organisations and institutions involved in this area of practice? So that might be like your local area, or it might be all of the people who are involved in that art form or creative uh, form that you're using. So that kind of field of interest and the type of work that you're doing. When you're thinking about stakeholders as well, you also want to think about who would be interested in your project. So who's already keen on the types of things you're doing? If you're uh, designing and publishing a game, who are the people who play games? Who are the people who write about games? Who are the people who get involved in that community? Think also about who you could partner up with. So does it help anyone else? Does your project help anyone else to achieve their own aims or their own goals? And who else is already doing things like this? All of these people are going to be stakeholders in what you're doing. You might want to think about finding who has already been involved in a project like this before and they might be useful to you in lots of different ways. Then you want to think about who could help support your project. So who could be an advisor or a mentor? That's a great thing if you're thinking about a project that's quite new to you or at a scale that you haven't worked at before. So finding somebody to mentor you who's already gone through the process will be amazingly useful to you. Who maybe has the skills that you need? So there might be particular, particular kind of technical uh, things that you need help with. There might be skills in things like fundraising or community organisation, things like this that you might actually benefit from. And also thinking about who might have some money that they can contribute. This might be a small or a large amount. It might be organisations that operate in your local area or in your field of practice. It might be places like colleges and universities. Your project might cross over with their kind of aims. And they might have some small pots of money that are available to people to help support things uh, to get up and running. You might also want to think who might have other resources that they can contribute. So if you're looking for a venue, are there people who you know who've got access to venues or organisations in your field of interest or your geographical area that might be able to help you out with things like that? It might also be things like equipment or it might be uh, volunteers or staffing for different things that you're doing. When you're thinking about all of these different stakeholders, I'd recommend writing a list of these people. So working out in these columns who would be interested, why they would be interested in your project, and what could they contribute. So what would be different things that they could offer up to the project. It might be, again, skills or equipment or venues. It might be cash. It might be... Uh, donations of different kinds. You want to write the name of the stakeholder, so it might be an organisation or it might be an individual. You want to think about how you could contact them and what kind of things you should ask them for. 
So say you're contacting somebody like a blogger who writes about your topic or your field of interest. Maybe you contact them uh, by Twitter or a contact form on their blog. And maybe what you're asking them for is to blog about your project, about what you're doing, so that they can tell other people, so that they can become interested in it too. Once you've got your list of stakeholders together and spent some time brainstorming it, you'll have worked out who will benefit from your project, who's likely to be interested, and who might be able to support you in different ways. You're going to want to get those guys on board when you're looking at what type of fundraising uh, that you want to do. So stakeholders might play a key part. They might be the audience, they might be the participants, or they might be the crowd that helps you achieve crowdfunding goals.